Hello, Angie Houston. Uh, I am very excited today. Uh, we have a brand new guest that we've never had before, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, today we have Welcome to the Multicasting Jungle. And uh, my guest today, Jan Nicholas Wortman, gets major, major extra points for the Guns N' Roses episode. That's, that's, I just love it. Uh, I want to, uh, first I want to introduce really quick our panelist, uh, Kyler Johnson. Kyler, say hi. Hi, I'm Kyler Johnson. I'm a senior software engineer with Bullhorn. Super excited to be here as always and uh, super excited about today's topic. I'm super excited to have you uh, starting to become a familiar face on NG Houston. I love that. Me too. Okay, so welcome and thank you. Uh, I'm glad to have you back. And Jan Nicholas, I, I'm really excited about your episode. Uh, I really love uh, RxJS. So I want to say really quick before you jump in um, that this, we talked about this, it's not exactly a beginner episode. We have a lot of beginners that watch NG Houston and we love them. So if you are a, an RxJS beginner, if you're struggling at all with RxJS concepts, I want you to go watch Corey Ryland's episode because it's really, really good for beginners. It's a really good intro to RxJS, very good episode. And then come back for this one. If you're familiar with RxJS, then Jan Nicholas is gonna show you how to make it sing like Guns N' Roses. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so what what you got for us? And thank yeah. you so much, by the way, for uh, coming and teaching us because this I'm, is, I'm so excited to have you. I've been watching you for a while and I and I, I don't remember, I saw a, an article that you wrote or I saw a talk you did and I was like, please come and teach us. And I'm really excited that you did, thank you. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, and you're coming from Berlin, right? Uh, no, it's Düsseldorf. I'm, Düsseldorf. It's Near, pretty much Near. the opposite side of Germany. Yeah. Berlin. <laughs> I'm, lear I'm learning geography. I have not been there yet, but once I get there, I won't ever forget it again. I'm super bad at it too, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, let's talk about uh, RxJS. Maybe I can share somehow my screen, probably. I don't that would know. be really helpful to talk about RxJS. Screen share, oh. yeah, that <laughs> sounds good. Okay, probably you can see my screen, maybe. Yeah, amazing. Then let's hit the button. Okay, so as you already announced, my talk is about RxJS and multicasting. You already did a brief introduction, but let me maybe add some details here. So my name is Janik Wortmann. I'm a software consultant. I'm part of the RxJS core team for like a year or something like that, I think. I think it's a year. Um, I'm also organizing a small. I did meeting. not even know you were on the RxJS core team. I just thought you were cool. I have to be nicer to you. That's you are nice. Don't worry. I didn't even know. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Now I want your autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I get blushed. <laughs> um, yeah, as I already said, I'm organizing a small Angular meetup here in Düsseldorf. And I love talking about barbecue, so I'm happy for all kind of recepts, ideas, uh, tips and tricks. I don't know, everything. I love it. You have to follow Wes Grimes. I you. already talked to him yeah. multiple times about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, a little competition going on there, but. Oh, yeah. That's good. Okay, now let's get into the RxJS multicasting jungle, I would say. And first of all, to get there, we have to cross the unicast bridge uh, to get a basic idea what multicasting is in general about. So, so unicast is pretty much the opposite of multicast. So probably as you get into RxJS, you will see that observables are cold and that kind of stuff. It's more or less the same. So for now, it is the same, okay? So if you're saying uh, observable is unicast, that means that each sub subscriber gets its own producer instance. This means that uh, all the values are totally unique, uniquely produced for that particular subscriber. So if you're referring to an HTTP call, for example, and that will read that into an observable, I would subscribe to that the first time the HTTP call is executed. And if I would resubscribe to that or retry it, or I don't know, it would be re-executed. That's what unicast is about. And multicast in contrast to that is also referred to a hot observable. It's not completely the same, but for the basic idea, it is the same. So for now, it, as Seb mentioned, it is the same. <laughs> um, and multicast means that the producer is created outside of the subscription process itself. So if I would refer to the HTTP example again, if I would have a multicasted observable wrapping my 
HTTP call. I would just perform the HTTP call run and sharing the result for all my subscribers. So this is what multicasting is in general about. So, and all multicasting mechanisms provided by IXJS are based on subjects. And so now we shortly talk about subjects in general. And for multicasting, subject is totally the king of all because it's based on that mechanism. And a subject is a combination of an observable and an observer. So more or less, it's just an observer, oh, sorry, an observable exposing the observer. So it's exposing next, error, and complete. And you can interact with that to provide values over it to all your subscribers. And there, there you see already it's that it's a multicasting mechanism because as soon as I call next and providing some values, all the subscribers get this value. So it's outside of the subscription process. About shortly about subjects, short announcement. Uh, I'm doing a kind of exciting talk about subjects with Michael Lutke at Denver, and I'm really excited to meet Bonnie there. We're going to have so much fun in Denver. You're um, doing a talk with Mike Lutke? Yeah. Ha, he's so fun. <laughs> He is kind of crazy, but yeah, he is. <laughs> he is very crazy. Crazy and fun, yes. Yeah. True. Hopefully his ears are burning. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, back to subjects. So there are, in general, just very short introduction. There are four kinds of subject. There's a fifth, but that's not really important for now. So four kinds of subjects. Uh, the basic one I already introduced, the subject. Uh, having just an observable and observer exposed, and notifies all subscribers as soon as there's a new notification incoming. Uh, behavior subject, which we will discuss if we maybe rename it, but that doesn't matter for now. So the behavior subject is caching the latest values, and you have to initialize it with one value. So all the subscriber will definitely get one value immediately and all the new values afterwards. So this is also very commonly used in Angular applications for a lightweight state management, where you can use uh, this kind of subject in a service to cache values and provide them to all your subscribers. The replay subject is kind of similar, because it, the difference here is that it can cache this up to infinite, an infinite amount of values. So it will just emit them immediately as someone subscribed and emit all new values afterwards. And you can also define the amount, how many notifications should be cached. And the very last difference is that it, you don't have to initialize it with one value. So it's really just about the values which are newly incoming or emitted explicitly. The async subject is the less important one. It's kind of uncommon to use. I, for one, for now, I think I just saw once a wild async subject somewhere. Um, doesn't matter for now. The async subject is used if you want to emit a val the values or uh, one value as soon as the subject is completed. So you can, so for example, you're having multiple HTTP calls and at the end you're done with it, completing your subject, and then the last value is emitted to all subscribers. So this is slightly edgy, I think. I didn't use it yet, but it's there. <laughs> so now I want to talk about multicasting more, and especially the multicasting operator. But to, to do that, I would prefer doing a very short live coding. Hopefully, it will go well. Once it was kind of good, and the, the the very first time was totally horrible. I, it's hard to live code when you're streaming. It, it takes a special kind of courage. I I'm excited about this. So we will see. We will see. But it's good because if you have somebody who's like you know a big expert and they you know kind of mess up and make mistakes and they, but like it, it's good for everybody to see that this is normal because everybody does it. True. Um. Right. So. The idea is that we are using interval. So I'll shortly demonstrate the difference between unicast and multicast, and therefore demonstrate how the multicasting operator works internally, more or less, from RxJS. And I need take. So, and this one is from slash operators. 
So I'm having a source observable and initialize it with interval one second, probably. One second is good. I'm also using tap. And at the very beginning, I will clear my console. So I'm having the source observable and I want to, first I want lock all the things. And afterwards I want to take just the first 10, for example. So if I now would subscribe to that, um, let me move the logging inside the subscription. That's better. I really love using console logs to teach RxJS <laughs> because it's just, it's just so simple. It takes away all of the other code and just look at the RxJS and I think it's such a good uh, demo. That's true. And now we will see that uh, the notification comes in and after the 10th, it should complete an end. So if I now use a set timeout here and resubscribe to that observable, again, source.subscribe. This time I will use A just to have, make a difference between those two. And use a delay of two seconds here. We will see in three seconds that we are starting with X and A is uh, starting again with zero. So it's a new subscription process, new values coming in. That's what Unicast is about, right? And if we would now like, would like to make this multicast, first I will make this away to have a clean IDE. So to make it multicast, we will use a serve subject, not a service, a subject. And initialize that sub equals to new subject. And I, what I now do is that I subscribe to my source observable and pass all the notifications to my subjects. So what's this doing is because my subject also provides a next error and complete function, these are indirectly called and passing all the notifications coming over that observable. So I don't really need to care. Does it error, does it complete? I don't care, it's just passing all to the subject. Um, but still nothing happens. That's the case because I need to actually subscribe to my subject now to get the values out of it. And I named it sub, that's good. Again, X and we're console logging X. And hopefully we will now get values again. And even though now I would add a set timeout here, subscribe again, use A. If I'm typing too fast or something, you just interrupt me, right? You're doing awesome. Uh, so what's now happening, thanks. <laughs> so what's now happening is that you, you see the second subscription isn't starting with zero again. It's sharing the producer instance and it's getting the value, the same values at the other subscriber. The problem is that I have to manage the additional subscription process of this, of the combination of the subject subscribing to the source observable. And what IHS does now is it has a so-called connectable observable. It's a special kind of observable, uh, which offers a connect method. And this subscription process is happening as soon as you call this connect function and returning that subscription instance. So you have implicitly managed the second subscription instance. But let's talk about the multicasting operator now. That was the live coding about for now. Maybe we'll do some later on. We will see. Um, so the multicasting operator is used as this. You have to pipe multicast and provide, provide a subject instance there. And this makes cold observable hot. So it's sharing all the notifications to that subject 
But the thing is, as I already said, it's returning a connectable observable. So at the very end, somewhere you have to call um, connect to trigger the subscription from the subject to the source observable. Maybe I will shortly do what I did here with a multicast operator. I think that would be cool. Yeah, I think so. So let's import multicast here. And instead of all this fancy fancy, we will just add multicast and provide a new subject here. Even this can be removed. And was that a screenshot? Sorry, sorry, that was mine. Uh, don't mind. I'm reading you. <laughs> um, so if I didn't make any mistake, this should do totally the same as before. I shouldn't remove all the things, just the necessary bits. And there is a missing bracket. This is too much. And I named it A, not X. And still nothing happens. That's the thing what I just said. Where's that coming from? Oh. Yeah, I should probably actually subscribe and not just cause that timeout. <laughs> Source.subscribe. Did we lose you? I think we lost him. Tyler, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. I, I can't hear him though. I think we lost him. I think we lost him. Let's give him a minute and see if he comes back. I think we lost him. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking that we give him a minute and if he doesn't come right back in a minute, then we will reschedule. How are you, Kyler? <laughs> oh, there he is. We see you, uh, we don't see you. All right. Can we hear I mean, you? I can hear you. I'm really sorry. My internet provider thinks I don't need internet for today. No, so. that's okay. We're glad you're back. Everyone was <laughs> like holding their breath going, where'd he go? <laughs> so where did I last you? <laughs> I, uh, I was talking all the time. and <laughs> I think you were setting up. So I saw the subjects come in. Uh, and I, th I don't, I don't know where you, uh, where you left off in the console log. The last thing I think we saw was, uh, where you were subscribing in the, or subscribing yeah. to the subject in console logging that. And you had, you had backed up to move it into a multi multicast. Okay. So code is prepared now, <laughs> actually. You want to share your screen? Um, not sharing my screen, true. 
Um, I used to share my screen. <laughs> so, OK. So before we used the subject and implemented the multicasting operator more or less from scratch, I planned to do it more or less live. And actually, I did, but you couldn't so see it. So that's the result of it. <laughs> and so the multicasting operator here is behaving quite similar than the subject stuff we implemented before, despite the fact that it's now returning a so-called connectable observable. Unfortunately, you have to explicitly cast to the connectable observable because it's not properly typable with TypeScript for now. Um, or at least I'm not able. I don't know. <laughs> so um, until we, for now, we will remove that. And if we don't call connect, the subject isn't now connecting to our source observable. Therefore, none of the values are uh, emitted. And as soon as we call connect to it, we get values back. The thing is that this is returning an additional subscription instance. So if you do it like this, you have to handle and manage that explicitly on your own. Therefore, we have you covered, but let's, is, uh, yeah, I got all the points for now. So there are some dark sides of IXS, right? This would be much too easy for being something about IXS. So there's also a method overloading of the multicast operator where it's expecting a so-called selector function. And what the selector function is doing, it's actually taking care of the subscription process and passing the multicasted source observable. And for each subscriber, now a new subject instance is created inside this subject factory. And I see some missing brackets here, but doesn't matter for now. Um, so this is kind of weird and probably really edgy. So I know. Nicholas Jameson is using that a lot for his um, RxJS ETC library for custom operators. So you can use that if you want to delay values, for example. So, you're, so you want to multicast them and delay them so that you have like a start with delay so that you are just emitting values if another observable didn't emit values. And those kind of complicated stuff you can do with it. And Nicholas Jameson wrote, two or three really good articles about that. If you want to dig even deeper into that, you should definitely check them out. I hope I linked them at the end of the slides. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but there are more operators about multicasting in RxJS. It's not just the multicast operator. There's also a published operator. And I know some of you may think, wait, this at the picture isn't a panther. But I think you mix up because that's an RxJS panther. He looks slightly the same like a snow leopard or something like that. <laughs> but I know it's confusing. So publish. Publish is another operator. I still have internet, right? You do still have internet. Okay. okay. And I love your picture. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, so publish is, this is an extract actually from the RxJS source code base. I just stripped out some typings and those kind of stuff. But it's more or less copy pasted from there. So what's actually doing, it's just a convenience method of the multicast operator. Um, and why we are actually doing this is to provide convenience for all different kind of uh, subjects you can use. So we, you can use published behavior, which will use a behavior subject under the hood. So a new subscriber would get the latest value. Publish last is pretty the same, just with an async subject under the hood. So there's nothing really special about publish at that point, just that it's a convenience operator for using the multicast operator with all different kind of subjects. And this is probably the cutest image I got for now, but I really like it. Aww, <laughs> so that is so adorable. <laughs> I think you're right. It is, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I still got some operators for you, so don't get bored. Ref count, and now we have some marvelous diagrams here. 
very sophisticated, made by me. So what RefCount is doing, if you're applying ref, the RefCount operator to a multicasted observable, it's a, it is counting the subscriber subscribers. So as soon as someone subscribes, internally RefCount has a so-called counter for referring to the subscribers. So as soon as someone subscribes, it um, the counter goes up and it's subscribed to the multicasted observer. So the subject under the hood subscribed to the source observable. And with this mechanism, you can use the easy way of multicasting just like I did without the actual need to uh, call the connect method. Uh, but RefCount also got some different use cases because as soon as someone subscribes, it gets all the values just as we are used to it from RxJS. And now the second subscriber comes in and there's a new subscription process happening from the subject to the source observable. But now all my subscriber get my get the values just as I'm expecting it from a multicasting operator. But the one is unsubscribing. So imagine I don't want to get any new values for any reason. I don't know. Uh, so the reference counter counts down. And with the next unsubscribe, the re reference counter is at zero. And what's happening then is that the multicast observable is made made whole, uh, cold again, made cold, yeah. Um, so as soon as someone is, exactly, it's the subject now unsubscribed from the source observable. And as now another one would resubscribe to N, the subject would resubscribe to the source observable. And therefore, new values would be generated. So if we imagine using this ref count mechanism with the interval uh, example I used before, so in this period, until this unsubscription kicks in, all the notification would come in and I don't know, it would count up like we are used or known by interval. But as soon we don't have any subscriber, the source observable is unsubscribed from. And with the new subscriber, it would count from zero again. I think I will demonstrate that later on to make it clearer. Um, but this is pretty much what's happening. So we don't need to explicitly call connect because RefCount is taking care of it and it's counting the subscriber reference. As long as there is one, our observable is hot. As soon as there isn't one, we make it cold again. So that's what RefCount is about. And this is also kind of adorable picture, but we have the share operator. What share is doing is pretty much using multicast and the ref count operator under the hood. So just to elaborate on this, what's happening here, we are just applying the source observable to all the operator. So what's actually doing is we are calling source.pipe multicast and ref count afterwards. That's a kind of syntax you could use for RxJS, but pretty much no one besides the core team inside the core framework is doing like that. So that's the thing how share is working and share is kind of common in Angular application or at least kind of known for making a cold observable hot, but just as long as there are sub any kind of subscribers. So it's also a convenience method for using multicast with ref count. So it's having the same behavior like ref count. And there's also a share replay, which is using a replay subject under the hood to cache a certain amount of values, you can initialize that. There are some decent differences because um, the share replay mechanism has some kind of weird behavior. So it's not completely the same like using a, um, the publish replay operator with ref count. Um, and there is also a very good article from Strongbrew about that. Um, but in general, it's like share with a replay subject under the hood. So, um, uh, give me one second. I will turn on the light to make it a bit lighter in here. One second. I can see again. Amazing. <laughs> it's getting dark over there, huh? Mm -hmm. We, that's it's, why we had to move into Houston because it used to be 30 p.m. our time, which was like dinner time here, but it was like the middle of the night there. 
Yeah. And uh, so we were trying to get our European friends to come and teach us stuff, and they had to stay up until 1 a.m. So. I really appreciate being at, at 6 p.m., which is totally awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's after work. Awesome for us, too, because we love it when you guys come on and teach us stuff. We, <laughs> love, we, we started making more friends in Europe, and we had to move the whole show, but it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, back to the wrap up, and afterwards, let's do some live coding, I would suggest. Yeah. Oh, more or less. I love it. This is so exciting. <laughs> um, so what multicasting in general is doing, it's sharing values to our subscriber. And there are some special use cases. So what's a very good use case is HTTP caching. Um, because you actually don't want to perform uh, HTTP calls every time one subscribe to it. Actually, you want it to multicast to all subscribers and just get the latest value in most cases. For sure, there are some cases where you want to refresh it and do another one. But more or less, in general, you want to have one HTTP call and share the values. Um, if you are not that familiar with the mechanism of multicasting itself, you can easily use subjects yourself, just like I did. It's because subjects are much easier to grasp for beginners and it's not that magically like applying an operator and you're having some downsides there and some edge cases here it's much more in your control at this place and this is what basically multicasting is about i probably talked super fast today but at this place i want to thank shortly michael lutley who helped me with designing the slides i'm super bad at designing slides and he Rock that, obviously. And really Nicholas. <laughs> don't tell him I said that because we don't want it to go straight to his head. Because I really like to give Mike a hard time whenever possible. So <laughs> I don't want to be too nice to him because I, yeah. I just like to pick on Mike. But they were really <laughs> nice slides. I got to give him that. <laughs> um, and I also want to thank Nicholas Jamieson who helped me with getting the idea of this. Uh, selector function, the multicast operator. I had really hard times and struggled with it a lot. And I messaged him on Twitter and he, I think it was deep in the night for him because he's living in Australia and he's super kind, helped me a lot. So thanks for, at this place for it. Really helped me. It really is a great community. We find so yeah. many people. Like I randomly just reached out to you and said, hey, this is really cool. Will you come on NG Houston and walk through this for us? And you were like, yeah, sure. Like so many. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, you know what's funny is when I first learned RxJS, uh, I was using RxJS for a while before I learned subjects, and so I knew how to uh, I, I knew how to like subscribe to an event, and, and like I could get an event from an, an interval, or I could get you know something from an input mm -hmm. on the screen. But it was driving me crazy because I couldn't figure out how to take dot next and use it somewhere else. And it was driving yeah. me crazy. And then when I found subjects, I was like, oh, that's what I need. I was so excited. It was just a little joyous moment for me because yeah. I couldn't figure out how to do that. And it was subjects. And so it was great. And and yeah. And the multicasting thing, I think, is really good for performance, right? When you have yeah. uh, all this stuff going on. Because RxJS, once you get, like I've seen so many developers who wrap their heads around it and they understand the concepts, but still it can get tangled up sometimes because it's such dense code. And really, I know sometimes it's a bit, it was confusing for me in the beginning when I learned it, but it's so powerful that yeah, it's that, worth that, that. pushing through that and getting really good at it. Because when you get really good at RxJS, there are so many things you can do, which is like exactly what you're showing us is really yeah. how powerful and how clean it can be if you, that, if that, you want to really practice with it. That's exactly the thing. You kind of have to force yourself to get into it. That's the problem because it's not that easy easily understandable, but if you're used to it, it's super, It's really easy because you're just thinking in that kind of mindset and you're, you will get used to it. Absolutely. I think this was a great talk. Will you uh, turn your screen share off for us uh, and we can wrap up. I was just checking with the uh, people watching online. We have nine people watching online. If you guys have any questions for Jan, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, we have a lot of beginners uh, that watch, and we also have people who go back on uh, later. Um, so for anyone, well, we don't really have, you didn't have a repo because you were just showing us. Oh, no, no, we're not wrapping up because you have more to show us on live coding, you said. 
I said. I was thinking that right. was the last slide, but you're not done yet because you still have more time. Like, yeah, so you guys absolutely can right. Ask questions in the chat, but he's not done yet because you're going to live. I love it when people live code it. I know it's stressful. <laughs> I, I don't like live coding on, uh, especially on YouTube because I mess up, but I love it because it's really great to watch. So I'm so sorry. So you need no, to. No, no, no. I, I also forgot that. about that. <laughs> we're going to miss that part. Um. Despite that, are there any questions for now so that we first cover those and come back to the last I, I don't see any questions so far. I no questions. Alex okay. and Connie were talking in the chat, but no questions. But I think from what you showed us so far, at least for me, I don't know, I might be biased because I've been doing RxJS for a while, but I really felt like that was easy to follow. And I really like the visuals because honestly, the little red fox would make me always remember. <laughs> What was it? But I never, I didn't lie because I just forgot what one box was on, but yeah. I really so, did. Like. So if there are any questions popping up later on, feel free to drop me a message on Twitter or something like that. I'm happy to answer them all the time. I, at least I try my best. And barbecue tips. And barbecue tips. <laughs> you actually, it's a good thing that Kyler's here because I want you to teach us about RxJS, but if we uh, if we have time left over, Kyler could teach you all kinds of stuff about barbecue. Please, he knows, he knows a little about barbecue. A little bit, but it, I hear that you and Wes have a competition going on. If you need a taste <laughs> tester, let me know. <laughs> Just Wait, don't I, ever I think... on Twitter at dinner time. Don't know that. Okay, so we have I... about twenty minutes left. Uh, yeah. Do you want to go ahead and? Show us some yeah. more. Okay, so first tell us what you're going to show us. What's, what, I have no clue. Um, I would suggest demonstrating the publish and share operator now, and probably ref count with using the same example uh, than before. But maybe let's make it more usable because we can actually use a, an HTTP call. That's much more practical than interval. So I will shortly start a small. Demo server, hopefully. Just like there. that, just started a little demo server like nothing. Sometimes it's I find cool no module. Uh, I, I see tricks that people do when they come on and teach us stuff that's not even what they were trying to teach us at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so now we have a small HTTP server running for demo purposes. Um, let's use the Ajax module from RxJS because many people don't know, but we have some Ajax stuff for HTTP calls. And I think it's called get JSON. Or is it Ajax? Deal. Okay, it's Ajax, I think. It's Ajax. I knew that. So instead of calling interval, I'm now calling Ajax dot get JSON. And it was HTTP localhost. I totally forgot about the port. I think it was 3000. Amazing. Users. And for now, we just have one value. And for now, I won't multicast it just to demonstrate it again. I Comment that out. And if we now subscribe, lock that. We're kind of used to that already. We will see some kind of users. And if we take a brief look at the network stuff, we will see more or less see multiple HTTP calls to users, to the user's resource. It's a kind of mean to do it in Stackflitz because Stackflitz is using a web worker, a service worker under the hood, so it's caching them. But it's doing those requests. As we can see here, two requests to users. And if we would now apply the publish operator, I actually import both of them. So publish. Uh, 
I need to save. That makes things hopefully easier. Why has nothing happened? Because you're live coding. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's how it works. True. OK. Uh, so instead of live coding, let's make it a live debugging. What's going on? Am I doing something wrong? I am doing something wrong because I need to um, connect. Yeah, but you're doing such a good job. Thanks. And now we're back. And let's make it more visible. So I get my two subscribers here, but I'm doing just one HTTP call, which is exactly the thing I just mentioned before. If I would now use share instead of publish, um, for now, at the first sight, nothing will really change because I'm having my two subscribers and all things good. I'm just performing one HTTP call. It should be this. Everything's fine. But if I now unsubscribe from those, I shouldn't use it. Let's name it subscribe and subscribe one. I'm super good at naming. So subscribe dot unsubscribe and subscribe one dot unsubscribe. And let's do another subscription. Then we will see the power of share. Okay. So this is going to be great. <laughs> Ah, OK, so the, the problem here is that because it's an asynchronous request, all the things I coded just happen synchronous. So it's unsubscribing before it actually gets values. Uh, so let's wrap it in the set timeout to make things easy, at least easy for me. So let's say it's just localhost, so we should be fine with an offset of two seconds. Exactly. we get. Um, our two subscribers, afterwards they are unsubscribed. And this should be here too, to make it my point clear. And I should add some spaces here. First subscription is kicking in and a new HTTP course performed. I hope you saw that. It was a very magical moment for me. Actually, uh, Janicus, uh, Ricardo wants to know if you can make your font size a little bigger. Yeah, sure. So this size bigger. This oh, this was a little bit too big. But Maybe if you uh, close the uh, the sidebar, you'll have more room. Over over on the left. Close yeah. the uh, project. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, to make my point again clear, because it was super magical for me, let's do it again. So here was the first HTTP call, and then the new one for my new subscriber. So that's where the ref count magic happens, right? So we have, uh, I lost, sorry. Um, we have our unsubscriber, so the, the counter of ref count is dropping to zero. So the observer is cold, and a new subscriber comes in the HTTP call is resubscribing, and we can do all the things we are used to with using a cold observable. The thing is, if we just use a hot observable with a publish operator, for example, we can't use any kind of retry operator or those kind of stuff, because the um, observable actually never completes. It's just emitting new value or the latest value or those kind of stuff, right? And the retry mechanism all use that mechanism of unsubscribing and resubscribing again. So that's also a thing you have to keep in mind if you're using, if you want to use share or publish. I think in most cases, if you want to apply multicasting, you probably want to use share. Um, you can also use that even if it's not the most cleanest code, but if you have complex um, logic inside your observable pipe method, you can use the share operator, store that, that particular observable inside a variable to make things more readable. 
it's not the best idea from a perform performance perspective. Very difficult. Um, but for readability, it improves a lot. So if you're, instead of having like 10 operators chained each by, by one by one, you can use some of them, pass them to a variable and multiple times subscribe to that and those kind of stuff. If I can jump in with a comment, I think, because I always say I have a lot of beginners who watch NG Houston, and I actually had to learn some of this stuff more than once before it made sense. And I know probably at this point, like you get talking about operators and the difference between them. And I think at least a few people you lose, right? Um, and for those people, I would say, because I, because the first couple of times I started hearing this stuff, I was like, and eh. so I got it working. Now leave me alone, right? I got it working. <laughs> True. But the thing True. is, the reason why I actually had to go back and and kind of really go back to the beginning, like rewind it all the way, listen again, listen to it more than once or go through it again is the reason why is you might get away with this, right? Your RxJS might not be perfect, but you have a few operators and you can make it work. However, definitely, when you get into an enterprise, hopefully, if you're really good at this, you continue to you know, get promoted, you end up as an architect, you end up in an enterprise, because Angular really shines in our enterprise. So yeah. if you do your job really well, you're gonna get promoted up to the point where eventually, if you're not already, you're handling this large repo and you've got this large app, and once it scales, this is the kind of stuff that you you may get away with for a while but once you're dealing with a large app and you have you know and you're not cleaning up because cleaning up subscriptions and stuff like that that's one of the most common things that i see yeah. where developers actually do get away with that for a while and then when it gets bigger and it gets you know suddenly you've got this large mono repo or you've got this large app and lots and lots of users this stuff starts to hurt so it might not really seem important unless you're an architect but it, it is important, and if you want to become, like, as you grow later, like, these are the skills that you have to have. And I think there are so many beginners that kind of go, ah, yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. And it, and it is, I, I think, I, I mean, in the beginning, I did, right? I was like, that's yeah. very confusing. But it's really important, these concepts. And RxJS, like, once you know enough to be dangerous, I think it's really, I would say, you need to keep going and push through um, to learn all these concepts because RxJS is so integral in Angular, uh, if, yeah. if if there's anyone watching this who who is not following everything that he says, I'm going to turn off everything. Put your phone down. Shut the TV off. And <laughs> watch it again because it's really important what he's saying. Maybe this not now, but <laughs> if at some point when, when your code scales, you really have to pay attention to this stuff. And I, I, I'm going to get down off my soapbox and shut up. But also, Martin's in the chat. Hi, Martin. He can't answer me because he's not a panelist, and I don't know why. But the next time you see Martin, tell him if he's going to join. Well, I can tell him because he's watching. Martin, you should be a panelist. Come in the <laughs> and with us so you can talk with us because we can't hear him. But he's <laughs> former shy. I wanted to add that to that what you said, Bonnie, real quick. That uh, I've always struggled explaining um, the concept of RxJS and reactive programming to people who, I guess, haven't worked with it enough yet. And uh, Thomas Burleson's talk from NGConf 2019, the superpower of RxJS and uh, facades, he talked. He said it very eloquently when he said that it's a uh, push-based architecture rather than the traditional pool-based architecture. Yes. And he goes in and describes what that means. Yes. And shows the example. Like I think it helped a lot of people on my team at least. I think it helped it click for them. It's so much, and so I do a lot of debugging performance issues. Uh, I do a lot of consulting, and I see these performance issues, and some of it is, you know, build configurations and stuff like that, and a lot of that, I mean, we can go through and we can, you know, help them with lazy loading and help them with stuff, but really, there are so many times that I see um, it's taking a long time. It's really slow. It's this big, huge app. We've got a big company with a big app, and I want to tell you, and a lot of you hopefully already know this, Angular is really fast. Like if you're doing it the, the right way, then it should be really, really, really fast. No matter what you're doing, it should be fast, right? And if it's not loading like super fast, then you have a problem. Because in, in RxJS, I, I really, yeah, I want to, this is something I real, feel really passionate about because so many people are using Angular and, and you have to really grasp RxJS. And if, if RxJS stresses you out, 
just go and make friends and give it a big hug because it's really, I mean, it's really powerful. And, and it can make everything so fast with such a small amount of code. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I'm so excited about, about all this. There's a lot. It's very powerful. But it stresses people out, and that's where I want them to come and make friends with RxJS. And people like you, really, Jan Nicholas, make it so approachable, and it seems like it's not so intimidating, and I'm so grateful to you for that. Thank you very much. The point I wanted to say out is that's exactly the reason why I got into the core team, and not because I'm doing those kind of stuff. What I meant is that uh, I had... As I began with Angular, I had zero clue about RxJS. I, I use it for sure, but very bad, totally wrong. <laughs> and I got some free time for my project. And then I said, OK, let's get deeper into it. And now, even in my projects, I came to a situation where weird stuff happens. And I'm sitting there like, what? what's going on? But Tap and console lock actually covers me most of the time for now. I love tap and console lock, absolutely. <laughs> so, and again, I want to say there's a there's a beginner episode in our NG Houston archive with Corey Ryland in RxJS that's really a great, like from step one. And even if you have been using RxJS for a while, if you're not totally comfortable with it, go watch that one. And we had uh, Jeff Cross on with RxJS anti-patterns, and Thomas Burleson was also on that episode, and we had Jeff Cross live coding, and uh, that was kind of a crazy episode, but that's a very good episode uh, about RxJS uh, common mistakes and how to fix them. I think this is really going to be one of my favorite episodes because this is such an important thing uh, that I think even the people who really feel like they know what they're doing can still learn more stuff. I learned some stuff today that I didn't know, and I thought I, thought I was pretty good with RxJS, but... Uh, this has really been a really fabulous episode, and I love. It. Oh, and one more uh, one more shout out that I want to do because there's an episode somewhere in our archive with Dominic Elm, uh, Reactive Snakes, where he did some very cool stuff with RxJS, and he's also a, an amazing teacher. I think yeah. the slides and the pictures and actually showing us in the console log is such a great way to teach. Um, and 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 I really I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. And I would like to tell you right now, Jay Nicholas. I would like you to come back on the show because I really get a kick out of you. I think you're funny and I think you're a very good teacher and I would really like for you to come back on the show. I would happy to come back, definitely. Yay! Anytime. Okay, and uh, Martin, I know you're watching because I saw you in the chat and we will uh, see you soon, hopefully. Uh, but Martin, you need to come back on into Houston, like in here with us and in, in not just in the chat. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think that's it for us today. We're out of time. Uh, I really, I can't thank you enough again for coming on and uh, we will see y'all next week. Thank yeah. you. Bye.